Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a bigger vacuum former. Over five years ago on this channel, I made my first build video and it was for a small vacuum former. Don't go watch that video, it's pretty awful. But now it's time to make a better one and a bigger one. There's a bunch of different ways to make these and a lot of people have made them. So if what I'm gonna do doesn't work for you, there's plenty of options out there. I'm gonna use this $50 space heater. This is made to hang in a garage or a shop and I think it's gonna work great here because it puts out about 1500 watts of heat. For the vacuum of the system, I'm going to use a shop vac like I used back in the day because it works perfectly fine and a lot of people already have them in their garages. Now in case you don't understand what a vacuum former is, let me talk about that real quick. People use a vacuum former for a process called thermoforming and basically you take a really thin piece of plastic like this, you heat it up and get it hot and then you pull it down over an object. You add a vacuum from the bottom and it sucks the hot plastic down around the object making a copy. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a big machine to copy other stuff. This device is made out of basically two boxes. You got a big one up top that holds the heating element and we're gonna put this up in there. And then the one on the bottom has a bunch of holes in it so it can draw the vacuum down through it. So I'm gonna make both of those boxes out of MDF and then mount this stuff in it. I'm just pulling these out because we're not gonna need them and they're just kinda in the way. I cut down several pieces of half inch MDF to make these boxes. The box is gonna be 12 by 24 inches, and that's just a size I picked. You could really do any size based on the heat source that you have. Also, there's no particular reason to use MDF or half inch, it's just what I had around. Before we assemble the boxes though, we have to drill a bunch of holes in two of these pieces. One of these is gonna be for the top above where the heating element goes, and so we're gonna lay the heating element on here to figure out mounting holes and a hole for the power cord to pass through. Then on the other one for the vacuum box, we have to drill a grid of a whole bunch of holes really close together. Now we're gonna use the CNC to do both of these holes just for speed, but you could totally do this with a hand drill and it would work exactly the same. In the past, a lot of people have asked me about making this grid with pegboard, and that would work. But by using that, you get a bigger hole further apart. We're gonna do smaller holes closer together to get a more uniform vacuum surface. We haven't made any mounting holes on the CNC yet, so we use some double-sided tape to hold this down into place before cutting the holes. After that piece was done, I did a dry fit of the box to make sure all the pieces were cut correctly. I pulled off the back panel and drilled a hole to match the size of the hose from the shop vac. After I made sure that everything fit well, I glued the whole box together with wood glue using brad nails to hold it in place. I didn't seal up all of the joints of this box, but you certainly could do that if you wanted to make sure that it was airtight. Putting a bead of caulk around all these joints on the inside would be one way to do that. I made sure to put lots of glue on all the surfaces, which kind of seals up all the joints. And I used a lot of brad nails to make sure that all the surfaces were really pressed together while the glue dried. If you did want to seal up the box, this would be the time to do it before you put on the last piece. You could put a bead of caulk around all of the inside seams before nailing on the top. And after that, the bottom box was completely done. I set it aside and started putting together the frame for the top box. We still had to cut the top piece on the CNC, adding some vent holes for heat to escape. And here again, we're using the CNC for speed, but you could totally do this with a router and get the exact same result. Got the boxes built, all the holes cut and all that stuff, and now it's time to mount the heater up in the upper box. Now the only thing I really have to do to make that happen is cut off some of this extra plastic that just makes it a little bit wider than it needs to be, and then we're going to mount it in that top section. Let's do it. I used a cutoff wheel on a Dremel to cut away this plastic. You can see the smoke coming out of it. It's pretty gnarly and it stinks. Make sure that you have good ventilation if you're going to do this. I pulled off the end cap of the heater. I needed to reroute the wire through the MDF box. So I had to mark the wires that went together and then took off the wire nuts. It ended up that these were soldered together and I cut them loose. And it was a good thing I had them marked so I knew what went back together later. 
After I got the wire pulled out, I fed it back through the MDF top and then put everything back together into the casing. And to put these back together, I just stripped off the insulation with some wire strippers and then put the wires back together using wire nuts. And just to be safe, I wrapped these with electrical tape to make sure that everything stayed where it should be. After putting everything back together, I set it on the top and then flipped it over into the box. Now the heater itself is a little bit deeper than the box that I made for it, and that's kind of on purpose. I wanted to make sure that I could get this apart, so I pre-drilled some holes and drove in some screws to hold this all together. There's a bunch of different ways to mount the heater in the box. I wanted to actually get it below the box a little bit so that all the heat comes out rather than goes up and heats the MDF. If you can make this box out of metal, great, that'd be even better, but in this case, I really can't. So I'm gonna move this box up. I've got it sitting on some spacers so that the entire face of the heater is below the box. All the heat's gonna come down from there. So I'm gonna drive in some screws from the outside into the plastic housing to lock it in place. I do wanna point out really quickly that I drove those screws into very specific places. I made sure that I put those into spaces where I knew there was no wiring and no electrical stuff behind there. You definitely don't wanna drill or screw into an area where there's wiring because you might strip one of the wires and cause a short, cause a fire, that could be really bad. I pulled the heater back out and then painted both of these boxes black with a couple of coats of spray paint. And while those were drying, I started working on the brackets to hold the two boxes together. The brackets are just four pieces of angled aluminum and I got this at the local home center. You can cut thin aluminum with most woodworking tools, so I cut these down to length with a miter saw. On each one of these pieces, I marked the depth of the box as a reference. Then I made two more marks where the screws were gonna go and used a punch to make a little indention to start the drill bit. In each one of those indentions, I drilled a hole all the way through and then came back with a countersink bit to countersink it so that the screw head would sit flush. I did the same thing to both sides of both ends of all four pieces. It took a while. But once I got all four done, I pushed each one all the way into the corner and made sure it was flush with the bottom before adding screws. These are surprisingly secure with four screws on each one of the corners. Once I got all four pieces on, I flipped it over onto the top piece and did the same thing. We got the machine pretty much put together. I think it's all ready to go. Now we gotta make the frame to hold the plastic on the inside. I'm gonna measure the inside of this just to make sure I have the dimensions right, and then we're gonna cut some steel. I used my metal cutting miter saw to cut down pieces of flat steel to make these two frames. These need to lay flat on the top of the vacuum box. So I laid them end to end, not overlapping, and added a tack weld to get everything in place. After they were tacked together, I went back and did full welds. Okay, so the battery in my helmet die, there's a battery that makes the glass auto darken when the flash comes from the arc, and that died. So it doesn't really work, so my eyes wouldn't be safe, so I'm having to use an old school just cover, which makes it almost impossible to see what I'm doing. So this is really bad. It would not be a good welding job for most other purposes, but all this has to do is hold a really thin sheet of plastic. I finished up making a second frame that matched the first one, and then laid on some pieces to act as handles. These are on the top frame and they do overlap, but they're not gonna be in the way of anything. And after I got all the pieces welded together, I went back with a grinding disc to smooth out all the welds. Now it doesn't really matter if they're smooth anywhere except on the bottom frame and on the bottom of the top frame. You wanna make sure that these pieces are sitting as close together as possible and they sit flush against the top of the vacuum box. After I got those pieces pretty smooth, it was time to make some wooden handles so I didn't get burnt by these metal ones. I laid a piece of MDF on the metal handles and traced the outside profile. 
Then I set the depth of the bit on a small router and routed out the area where the metal would sit into the MDF. I stayed just inside the line to make sure that I had a nice tight fit. Once I got one finished, I did the same thing on the other one. I drew a line roughly half an inch outside this area that I'd cut out, and then cut that out on the bandsaw. And once I had those pieces cut out, I traced them onto another piece of MDF and cut them out to match. This is going to sandwich around the metal and make a nice wooden handle that shouldn't heat up as much. I added some CA glue and activator to get these pieces to bond really quickly, and then used a belt sander to round over the edges and make them a little bit more comfortable to hold. I suppose you could put some epoxy in these to make sure they stayed in place, but mine fit tightly enough that they were going to be fine. I took the MDF off and sprayed these pieces black just to make them look a little bit cooler. The paint on the frame is drying, so we're going to go ahead and make the mounting points on this to hold the frame in place. I'm going to drive in two screws, one on the front and one on the back, right in the middle, and that's so that I can use the 12 by 24 frame that I made or make a smaller frame for smaller material in the future. I'm going to drive in this screw up to the right height and then put a rare earth magnet on the end of it. That way the metal frame can snap right onto it and when the plastic is heated up, I can grab it and pull it right down. I ordered some styrene to test this with, but it didn't show up in time. So instead, we used some really thin plexiglass that we got locally for the first tests. I put it in between the frame pieces and used some binder clips to hold the whole thing together. I slid it up into the frame and quickly realized that two magnets was not going to be enough. I decided to go ahead and add four more to make sure there was plenty of magnet surface to hold the frame into place. Most of these use a vacuum chamber. The really high-end ones use a vacuum chamber where you build up a vacuum and then when you press a button, it sucks all the air out of this into that chamber and that creates the vacuum. We're gonna use a shop vac and it's not as strong, but it should be pretty good for most of the stuff that I'm gonna use this for. So I'm just gonna plug it in. I've got it on the highest setting and we'll see how long it takes for this plastic to start to droop. It only took a couple of minutes for the plastic to start to droop, but this isn't the right type of plastic, so it didn't work. Also, I realized that the binder clips were actually keeping the frame from the surface, which meant that it couldn't actually seal on the table. So I cut out some thin strips of EVA foam to make a gasket around the outside of the box. I used spray adhesive to put down one layer all the way around, making sure that it connected from corner to corner, so that it was as sealed as possible. Then I laid the binder clips into the places where I thought they would end up being and made a mark. I cut some smaller strips of EVA foam to fill in the gaps in between those marks. I figured it's not perfectly sealed, but it would probably work better than no gasket at all. I also went back and adjusted the height of each one of the magnets, making sure that they were the same distance from the top. So this was the first test we used plexiglass because it was the only thing we had in the right size. And it's a really brittle plastic. ABS or styrene will work a lot better and I'm actually waiting on that stuff to show up so we can do a proper test. The heating element is only about half the full width of this thing and I knew that going into it and you can actually see it. It heated up in this section and not at all on the sides. Now this is not a big deal, but you're just gonna have to work within the heated area. So I can't do something that's actually 24 inches long. I'm stuck with about maybe eight or 10 inches in the middle, that's fine. The only piece of styrene that I do have is actually too small. It's 12 inches square, and I put it in here, but there's nothing supporting the sides of it, so it's probably gonna droop all weird, but I just wanna try it anyway. But immediately after that test, the delivery man showed up with the right material. Then it was time to try it for real.
I was really surprised with how much detail came out in the pull, especially around the lens area. So I decided to try some other things with a lot more detail. Specifically, the Raspberry Pi turned out really, really well. And you can even see some of the screen printing on some of the pieces of the Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna try out this cookie jar, and it's probably not gonna work, but when you vacuum form, you should usually put something underneath the item that you're forming, and that's called a buck. Now, when I was using the Raspberry Pi earlier, I just put some pieces of MDF underneath it, and that's so that it gets formed past the object, and then you can cut off the plastic to the actual shape that you want. We're just gonna try this just to see what happens. This thing went surprisingly well. I honestly did not think it would work. And if you were just making a face mask for the front section, this would have worked perfectly. Now there's a lot to learn about actually getting usable forms pulled from this thing. There's a bunch of variables. It depends on how much heat you have, how far the heat is distributed, how thick the material is, how tall the thing is that you're forming. So there's a lot to learn and a lot of practice is gonna go into getting what you want out of a machine like this. You have a bunch of different options here as far as vacuum and heat source. I got a simple heater off of Amazon that I could just plug up in there, but you could also buy individual heating elements and build it out to the size and shape and heat that you wanted it to be. And obviously the more vacuum pressure you have at the bottom, the better the pull's gonna be. So there's a bunch of different things that you can play around with when you make your own. I'd love to know what you think about this and what you would use a tool like this for. Let me know down in the comments. I've got lots of other videos that you may be interested in. Check some of those out over there and don't forget to subscribe. Also, I've got a second channel where we put behind the scenes stuff anytime we travel. There's a lot over there. Go check it out. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm going to use a $50 heater. A heater. Heater. And don't forget to sus. I'll see you next time.